All right, so I've ran everything by her. She truly does not want to talk to us. So the Nickel Samurai costume is in here? Yeah, I can't believe Mr. Karita went so far just to say bad things about Mr. Engard. Well, it was a press conference, so we had to go in costume. But weren't Mr. Engard and Mr. Karita friends? They weren't friends. They couldn't be friends because they were rivals. So a rival is someone who is a strong enemy? Pearls is really fired up over this. And I don't have an answer for her. Bottles of cosmetics are scattered all over the floor. This is probably where Mr. Karita fought his assailant. These glass shards. They're probably from the glass vase Miss Andrews knocked over. I don't know if any of this is going to actually be important for us. It's a beautiful wine glass and there's tomato juice in it. Ew, tomato juice. I don't really like it much. There's a bottle of it on the table over there. That's probably where this came from. It looks like Mr. Karita had dinner that night. This bottle, it's tomato juice. We had a lot of food at the awards show that night. But I wonder if the stars had gone on stage after only eating a meager meal like this. So that's a bed. Yep, it's a big, but it's a bed. Ah, Mr. Nick, it's so soft how easily children are entertained. Anything, the bear thing maybe? Wow, there are a lot of bears. Alarm clock ones, collector edition stuffed teddies, plastic models. It's pretty overwhelming. Is there a kind of bear he doesn't have? even a few in the trash can. Yeah, I get the feeling maybe the guy didn't really like teddy bears. Poor teddies. It's hard to bear with all these problems. I think this might have been the same thing as before, yeah. So messy. Yeah, okay. I think we're done here. Let's back up. I'm assuming that there's going to be, um, like we'll find something as we leave. I hope. Or not. Um, okay. Okay, in our office, cool. Maybe Gumshoe did something while we were gone, like, break all his stuff. Hey, welcome back, pal. I thought I'd make you a little something for dinner. That, that's nice, thanks. A rich man's luxurious full course meal. Out of a can, that is. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook, but I don't have the time to eat. Oops, looks like you don't have a can opener, pal. You've got to be kidding. In here, I thought he already had something whipped up. Oh, I know. There's the one way I know how to be helpful. Ask me about anything you want, pal. Go ahead. Well, since he's here and offering, I wonder what I should try asking him about. We already talked to you. Maybe present some stuff to you? Oh yeah, do you know about this card? Card? Edgeworth for some reason went pale the instant he saw this card. Hey, I know what this is, pal. You do? No matter what you no matter what way you look at it, I'd say it's a picture of a shell. Um, that's it? Oh yeah, that's right. Mr. Edgeworth really liked these cooked snail things. Um, what are they called again? Escargo or something like that? Mr. Nick, I think we just solved the mystery of why Mr. Edgeworth's face turned pale, right? As I suspected, Gumshoe is no clue. So this nickel samurai was really Miss Andrews, huh? Yeah, this is either when she went to Mr. Engard's room to get the knife. Or when she was done with the foul deed. But I guess we'll never know. Who would have thought that this knife Mr. Engard used to eat his dinner steak with? Go on, that it would be stabbed into the victim's body by Miss Andrews of all people. I guess she just hated the victim that much, huh, pal? The question isn't why she hated the victim to that extent, but rather... Why she tried to pin the murder on Mr. Engard. 
I wonder if she really hates Mr. Ingard. She might, he's kind of a loser. Can you please take a look at this? Can't think of anything to say about this pal. Why don't you make us some instant noodles instead? That's okay. Really? Could you please take a look at this? Um, I can't, okay. Let me go through real quick and see if there's anything you'll talk about. When I saw that button, I thought to myself, this is gonna prove Mr. and Guard's guilty. But it looks like there was a lot more to it than that, than I thought, huh, pal? You're a pro. You should know better than to say something like that. Well, I'm not a cop anymore. Just a regular helper around the office now, so... You know, I'm not paying you for this, right? I wonder if he misses working down to the precinct. The transceiver? Oh, Mr. Nick! You should ask Mr. Scruffy Detective about that thing. What thing? Oh yeah, this thing just up and broke all of a sudden. It... it broke, pal. When I was talking to the kidnapper, it just suddenly broke into static. Look, it sounded like this. I don't hear any static, pal. Huh? Maybe it fixed itself. That's strange. I'm sure it was making a loud static noise. Hmm, maybe... Maybe what? Maybe it was electromagnetic inter interference, pal. Electromagnetic interference? Okay, that, that didn't help at all. It'll be okay. You'll see her again, little missy. Yeah. It's really important that you don't give up. Okay. I guess the big voice really does give you a sense of presence. I won't give up, ever. Cheer up. You can't give in, little missy. Yeah. Hey, I know. I'll show you something cool. How's this? It's a real genuine pistol. I... I don't have my pistol or my police badge anymore. Cheer up! You can't give in! Yeah! What are those two doing? <laughs> People are jealous of my roguishly cool detective look, pal. It's because of this look that I passed the detective's test, you know? Oh. But you know, people can't coast through life on their looks alone, pal. Yeah, you can't count on your looks alone. Wow, I learned something new today! Is she alright? After being shot, I mean. Her wound isn't that bad. Well, the gunshot wound, anyway. But the wound to her pride, now that's a different story, pal. The wound to her pride? Well, until now, she's always upheld the Von Karma Creed. But since she came here, well, you've given her pride quite a beating, pal. Oh. I mean, she may act all grown up, but she's really still just an 18-year-old. Quite frankly, I worry about her, pal. That's the first time I've seen that side of Mr. Edgeworth, pal. Forcing people to say what he wants them during testimony. I want to know what in the world happened to him all this time he's been gone. I don't even know who that man is. I'm not a real fan of action shows or anything. But I know who Juan Carita and Matt and Gard are. Juan Carita, though. He was always desperately trying to be better than Matt and Gard. I can't believe it. May have getting kidnapped all because of this guy. I mean, what kind of person is the real murderer anyway? Maybe they're a big fan of Mr. and Gard. But the kidnapper's voice. He sounded like an old man to me. Nope. I'm not looking at Wendy Oldbag. My impression of her has totally changed, pal. Um, so where is she right now? I'm sure she's being questioned down to the precinct. At the very least, about messing with the body and obstructing the investigation. And she'll probably be staying over at the detention center. The detention center, huh? 
She was Miss Adrian Andrew's mentor. Because of the suicide of the mentor she depended on, Adrian Andrews tried to follow her in an attempted suicide. Now the question is, who is Miss Andrews relying on now? Nope, I got nothing for that one. Okay. This was... Ah, electromagnetic interference. Good, we got something. Um, so what is electromagnetic interference? It's something that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, when you put it that way... I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, for example, when a cell phone goes off next to a computer screen. The stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy and starts acting funny, right? I guess back in the day, maybe. Computer? Um, it's like when you use the dryer next to the TV and the screen starts looking weird. Oh, that was Phoenix, sorry. Oh, yes, the TV does do that. Hmm. Oh, so that's what you're talking about. She seems amazingly happy at being able to understand this. So the room you were in when that interference to the transceiver happened. There's got to be something there that's sending out very strong radio waves, pal. Something like, hmm, like a listening device or something. Ah. Hey, speaking of that, where were you when it happened? We were in Mr. Karita's room. The scene of the murder. What? That's it. I'm going to sneak into the precinct to get a bug sweeper. I'll meet you at the crime scene later, alright, pal? Ah, wait, come shoe. Oh yeah, baby, it's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah! We should be going too, Mr. Nick. All right, let's go. I guess, uh, back to the hotel, maybe? All this walking around is painful. Hey, you're finally here, pal. Sorry to keep you waiting. Do you have the, um, bug sweeper? Um, well, you see, I got busted trying to sneak in, pal. Then suddenly I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean. So, yeah. I couldn't get one of the police bug sweepers. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item. Hey, hey, calm down, pal. I didn't say I didn't get one. Just not the police's. Wow, so this is a bug sweeper? It looks a little broken. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh, by who? Me, of course. Ah, seeing this sure brings back memories. Hey, don't look down at it, pal. Sure, it looks a little beat up. But I put my heart and soul into building this puppy here. Your heart and soul? It'll work, trust me, pal. It'll do the job. But... But, but you can't set the sensitivity. So it's going to beep at anything that gives off electromagnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? Oh, ho, 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 well. Anyway, since I brought it all this way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? I'm getting that sinking feeling again. Okay, now, I'll tell you how to use this baby. There's a listening device or some other sort of bug hidden in this room, pal. So we're going to find it, right? Right, now first let's turn the sweeper on. Next, move the sweeper around to give the room a real thorough look-see, pal. The sweeper will let you know how strong of a signal it's picking up. So keep an eye on it, okay? Once you find something that's giving off a lot of radio waves, press ENTER to lock onto it. There's a lot of things here that are going to give off radio waves. So let's take a good look at anything and everything that seems suspicious, okay, pal? All right, I'm going to go stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find the bug. Got it, pal. Lamp check. Listening device? No. There are a lot of lamps in this room, aren't there, Mr. Nick? Yeah, and they're all on. You shouldn't do that, Mr. Nick. Don't you know that's wasteful? 
Uh, yeah, I'll be more conscientious from now on. Sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say the phone, probably. The cell phone? Nope, no bugs in here. How would you know that? Did you, like, systematically take apart the phone? I don't think you do. I don't think you know anything about cell phones, Phoenix. A cell phone? What? Don't tell me you don't know what a cell phone is. I'm sorry, I've never even seen one before. Now that she mentions it, my cell phone couldn't get any reception while I was staying in Karain Village. And Pearls has never lived outside that village, so... Well, I guess I can't say it's impossible to live without one. The radio is on and playing something. Oh, it's Kids Question Corner. Professor, Professor, why is the Earth round? Yes, why is it, Mr. Nick? Why don't you listen to the radio program a little more, Pearls? Ah, what a lovely bear. Ah! Ah, uh, this must be one of those fancy bear-shaped toy robots. It's a robot? It's a real robot? Yeah, it's a real one. Mr. Nick, yes? How many horsepowers is it? How many horsies? Horsies? Um, well, look, it's a bear, so, uh... It's got bear power, I think. Well, the phone is the most commonplace for a listening device, I'd say. But let's take the receiver apart first before we get ahead of ourselves here. Wow, you know a lot about electronics, don't you, Mr. Nick? Yeah, I know tons. Especially when it comes to taking them apart. It's my specialty. And then Phoenix just like, <laughs> like just bashes it against the wall. <laughs> I'll leave the fixing up part to Gumshoe. So, is there a listening device in there? No. And I really thought it had to be in the phone, too. Just like takes it and smashes it on the ground with a rock. Lamp check. Listening device? Nope. And they're all on. Yep. What about this lamp? Well, the listening device isn't in the air conditioner. Ah, yuck. This air filter is covered in dust and dirt. Yeah. Come on, Mr. Nick, let's wash it. I wonder if being a neat freak makes even the tiniest bug dust bunnies look colossal. What? Oh, nothing. I don't really think the listening device is in the TV of all places. It looks like the TV was left on, and it's now showing an old samurai movie. Yeah, this channel plays all sorts of international movies, as well as domestic ones. You know, every time I watch one of these old movies, I always think, Wow, these Japanese stars are really good at English. Uh, yeah. When I grow up, I want to study Japanese. I should probably keep my mouth shut here and not destroy your dream. Presumably, you're already speaking Japanese, right? Alright. That's a big old bear right there. What's this? It sort of looks like a hot water pot, but... Oh, well, it's kind of like a hot water pot, I guess. But instead of hot water, coffee comes out. Really? This pot can do that? Um, is there a pot that orange juice comes out of? I don't think there's anything like that, Pearls. Sorry. Oh, the water in this hot water pot has run out. I'll go get more water for it. Okay, sounds good. Looks like she's forgotten all about looking for the listening device. This is a refrigerator, right? I really don't think the listening device is in something like this. Because it's filled with nothing but healthy vegetable juices, right? Uh, yeah, sure. What does that have to do with any with listening devices? I'm gonna assume it's in a bear. Because like in Mr. Engard's uh, house, there was a bear on the sofa, wasn't there? I think so, anyway. Hmm. 
Maybe. Maybe one of the bays. It's the TV's remote control, but it doesn't look like the listening device is in here. Um, so I was thinking, I wonder if a TV remote works on other things, like... Could I make you change your expressions like TV channels? Zap! Hey! But if I could, oh, the people I would give the old mute button to. Well, I don't think it's gonna work on me. Why don't we try it in Maya tomorrow, okay? Okay. Assuming she's not dead. Oh. And here we have a dryer. Nothing unusual, I think. A dryer? Oh! If you use it next to the TV, it'll make the screen look all weird, right? Yeah. And when that happens, it's called electromagnetic interference, right? Hey, good memory, Pearls. I will never forget it for the rest of my life. What about this rice cooker? Wow, there's a real- oh, delicious loaf of bread in here. Looks like it's been on keep warm all this time since the murder. Well, Mr. Scruffy Detective always says, gotta keep the trail and crime scene warm. I think the keep warm in this case is a little more metaphorical. What's this? It's a small video camera. No listening device in this gizmo. You know, I'm gonna actually disagree with you and say there's probably some sort of listening device, like a microphone, in the camera. Could be wrong, though. Everyone's trying to make the everything smaller and smaller lately, aren't they, Mr. Nick? That's what it seems like. But I want to grow bigger and bigger. Well, eating only vegetables isn't going to help you there. You have to eat meat, too. There's no listening device in that notebook computer, huh? Um, what's a notebook computer? Do you know what a notebook is? Yes, it's a small book with paper you can write on. So? Well, that thing is like a notebook in a way. It's basically a small laptop. Um, Mr. Nick, what's a yeah, laptop? That's, yeah. Alright, it's probably this bear. Well, it certainly looks like an alarm clock. What's wrong? Why do you look troubled? I just can't imagine the listening device being inside this alarm clock. It's just, uh, sort of reminded me of something that happened a long time ago. Oh, well, anyway, it looks like the listening device isn't in here. Really? Is there anything else left to look at? This bag of chips. That looks like it would be an electronic device. It's a clock, right? Unless maybe it's mechanical? I doubt someone would go to the trouble of making a mechanical bear clock. When you could just like, you know, make a small battery operated one. Hope I haven't missed anything. Yeah, I think I've hit everything in here. And I can't stop looking. So it's not like a, oh, I guess... There is nothing in here after all. Like, that's not a thing. <laughs> no horsies. I'm pretty sure I've looked at everything of note in here. Alright, we're gonna look this one up. I'm not, I'm not sitting here, like, looking at every pixel for the next half an hour. Okay, so apparently I did miss something. The biggest bear, I have to look at its eye. So, see, so I looked over this, I'm like, ah, it's not the bear, and it must be... 
It must be reacting to the refrigerator, not the not the bear's eye. This is this is just a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Hey, so did you guys find it yet? The listening device, I mean. No, not yet. But this bear's eye is. Let's see, let's see. A perfectly normal stuffed bear with some really strong radio waves. Sounds like you found the device to me, pal. Let's dig this big fella's eye out and see what we've got. No, you can't! Such such a violent act. Oof. No! He's dead. That's... It's a miniature camera. And it looks like there's more. There's a transmitter and a timer. A what a what a meter? A transmitter, pal. Oh, is this more of that high tech stuff? So this tiny thing is a camera. Yep. It's a pinhole CCD camera, pal. It's a small high grade video camera, mostly used in security systems. So it's a video camera. It runs on a battery, which comes with it in a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. This is only the camera part here, pal. The tape recorder with the tapes inside it is somewhere else. Somewhere else? The footage is changed into radio waves, and then it's sent to that recorder. So, it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Yay, you know, you're right. From 8 p.m. for one hour. Okay. So what is a transmitter? It's a device that sends the footage the camera took to a specific destination. It's like a video version of a listening device, pal. It looks like it's attached to a small clock-like thing. Oh, that's a timer, pal. You can set it to turn the camera on and record it a certain time with it. You can set it for a certain time? Yep, let's see. This looks like it was set to start at 8 p.m. and go for one hour. 8 p.m.? Ah, and so that's why it messed up again at 8 p.m. because I guess it just does it every 8 p.m.? That was the time the award ceremony ended. There's no date set, so it's been recording every night, I guess. Mr. Detective, how long has this bear been here? Um, I'm pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. Then, then maybe... Maybe this camera caught the murder on tape. What? And if you think about the angle the bear is at, it's bound to have a clear shot of the whole crime, pal. Okay. So there was a camera in this bear's eye? And it was disguised as a present. And I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal. It's pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But who gave Mr. Karita this present? I, uh, I don't know, pal. But this means that someone out there's got a video of what happened that night. Isn't there any way we can find out who that person is? It's impossible, pal. Radio waves can be sent almost anywhere, so there's no real way to find out. Oh. Is there really no way to find out? I got it. What? Hey, pal, let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. What are you going to do? I'm going to go around to the electronic shops and see if I can find out who bought this. But that's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. Leave it to me. Even I have to search. Even if I have to search all night, I'll find your man, pal. Sure. Go ahead. Have fun with that. Oh yeah, baby. It's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah. He's gone. Yeah. But Mr. Scruffy Detective sure is a nice man. He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Maya's sake. 
It's a mystery how you always manage to do things in the most inefficient ways, right? Ack! You'll have to excuse me, I heard your conversation just now. Edgeworth, what are you doing here? A rescue team has been created and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic, but we have to move forward one step at a time. I see. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. We still have to find her. Hmm. So there was a spy camera hidden inside this stuffed animal, huh? You're one lucky man, right? Do you know this stuffed bear, little girl? Um, I have no idea. Hmm. Of course not. The maker of this bear is a very expensive luxury brand from overseas. It's completely handmade, and only a small number of them are exported here. What? The camera and transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with him are dead ends. Things like those can be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. Can you really do that? Mr. Nick, can he really? Well, I guess so. Hmm. It's 9 p.m. I think I can still make it in time. I'll be taking this for now. I'm sure you have other things you have to do. I like the idea of Edgeworth carrying a bear that looks to be possibly larger than him around. See you soon, right? Oh, it's heavy. Wait. What? Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. But besides that, right. Until court reconvenes tomorrow, you should concern yourself with this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Corita? The real killer? Do you really think it was Adrian Andrews? To be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a little time left. Find the truth, right? Everything begins with the truth. Oh god, it's heavy. Juan Carita's real killer, Miss Andrews passed. The kidnapper whose sole condition is an acquittal for Mr. Ingard. And this card, Shelly D. Killer. Maya, the only way I can save you now is to find all the answers to this case tonight. I don't understand what your real intentions are, Edgeworth. But as you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. I'm going to strap the bear to the top of the car. It's really heavy. You ever seen that video of the uh, the Phoenix Wright anime? It's uh, it must be like the first episode or something like that. And it, Edgeworth's driving his car, and someone dubbed over that with with uh, some Eminem song, like the the Slim Shady song or something like that. I love that video. Anyway, uh, yeah, we'll stop there for now. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, a little bit of a weird episode. <laughs> Started out really tired and uh, just... There's one point where... And I edited it out more or less. But I kind of like just dozed off for like three seconds. And I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't record anymore right now. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you next time for some more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. Bye.